Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I want to do a little bit of a special video. I kind of want to do a deep dive into uh, an artist. And um, for the first artist we're going to do, it's going to be Captain Hook. I'm going to plan on make a few more of these videos because I think they're very interesting. Um, basically what the principle is, is that I uh, took one of Captain Hook's tracks and used that as a reference track for everything I did and kind of tried to recreate um, kind of the same track, but obviously not the exact same. Um, I tried to uh, give it my own twist and see if I could um, do some cool things with it. But basically what I'm trying to do is get as close to the track as possible without sounding similar. Um, so with that being said, um, again, today is going to be Captain Hook. And for the track as a reference, I used uh, Time and Space uh, by him. And we'll go through the project and then at the end I'll play the whole track so you can have a listen to it as well. Um, but without further ado, let's get right into the video. Alright, so Captain Hook has a little bit of a... Um, it's not really side trance and it's not really house, but it kind of sits in between. Um, so it has a very long structure and it has a very kind of housey feeling to it, but um, all the lead elements and all the effect sounds um, suggest more of a side trance track. Um, so that's really interesting having that combination and I think that's uh, something you should experiment with because uh, it can bring cool results. Um, but for the first thing what I want to do is just kind of look at the track structures of um, Time and Space which I have here as well as um, my own track where uh, the track structure is here. Um, so you can see here I've lined it out a little bit. He has a very long intro and um, the intro also has some drums in there which you can see right here. I'm not going to play it for copyright reasons. Um, but then we have a pre-drop here where you kind of strip down all the elements and you come in with your first drop. And um, then you have, you know, a, a fairly long drop as you can see here. Uh, let me just turn off that. And then we have a break where the bass line gets uh, taken out completely and uh, the kick gets high passed. And then we get back into the drop and that kind of continues with various uh, drop lengths and different elements in there and then, um, you know, breaks and stuff like that. We have a fill here and there. As you can see, we have a short thing happening here. And then we finally get to an actual, like, long break where also the drums are turned off. So there's one long break in there, in uh, his track. And um, this is the only break where the drums are removed, but the bass is still kept here. Um, as you can see towards the end, this is just the bass line playing, and then the drums come back in. And then we repeat the whole process again a few times with a few little breaks. Again, same idea. And then we have a very long last drop and then an outro part with the drums, which kind of act the same way as um, the break where it's just high passed and uh, the bass is removed. And then we have a final outro where we have just some interesting stuff happening. Um, some interesting, like cool sound effects. Um, so that's kind of his structure, and I did something similar. Obviously, I didn't copy the exact same structure, but I took a lot of inspiration from it. And you can pause it here to um, check the difference between these two. Um, but for um, but for now, I want to go into the drums. All right, so I'll play the kick first, as that's obviously one of the main elements here, which sits throughout the whole track. Um, as you can see here. Very thumpy, very hard kick, and it doesn't have as much as like a transient as a silence kick does. Um, so it's a little bit calmer in that regard. Um, but the main point is that you're constantly automating it. Here we have a low pass coming through, but there's also a high pass here, which as you can see is being turned on um, a lot as well. So in the drop sections, again, uh, obviously you just want your kick to play. And then in your break, you immediately turn up the high pass um, very high. And then you kind of roll it back in so that it, it comes in. And then just before the drop, you turn it down so that when the drop hits, um, you have the kick again in full power. Um, sometimes in the break, the kick is kind of layered. Um, here we have something like this. So we have this hat come in with the kick. I'll play this whole thing here. You have the hat come in, and then later, once you go into the break, you can hear that there's another riot coming in. Uh, 
Um, so that right is kind of there to to make it uh, a little bit more exciting in the breaks um, because with just the kick, um, because it's high pass, you will only have the very short transient and um, that's not really exciting. So we have that right and it becomes longer and longer. Uh, I think I did that with reverb um, or it's just uh, the way I automated the filter on it and um, the utility together. I think that's it. And uh, that just makes it longer and um, towards the end, it, it really fills up um, basically the entire beat. And then we have one part where we don't have the right. So we kind of reset the listener and then um, we go into the drop. And then this second drop here, the first kind of claps and stuff like that and percussions come in. So let's have a listen to that. So this is uh, the percussion loop I made. Um, it's fairly simple. We have a clap on the two and the four. Um, only real cool thing is that he also has a different clap on the three. Uh, they sound very similar, but they're not the same. Um, so that kind of gives it a cool vibe. And also he uses um, the, 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 the slide in or the reverse clap to kind of give it a slide, um, which I've done fairly aggressively here. Uh, this is pretty long slide. Normally it's a little bit shorter, but I thought it was okay. And then on the first beat, he has a riot symbol, which is very clicky, very um, aggressive. So it, it has a very sharp transient and then the sustain is very low. Um, so you want to look for a ride like that. And that's together with the kick sounds like this. The final thing I want to talk about in this drum groove is this um, delay here, which I've talked about before in my 100 tips video. Um, I think I used the same example even. Um, but this is, is basically adding a rhythm to it by having a delay um, kind of do the rhythm for you without thinking about it. As you can see, I've set up some timing here as well as um, the ping pong. And what it does is it will be at 100% so you won't hear the dry signal or uh, this clap here uh, but you will hear the delay kind of happening behind it and that will add that rhythm that we hear heard um, at the last bit there and finally in terms of hi-hats and uh, stuff like that more in the high-end drums uh, we have two different loops here uh, this is the first one a very simple loop as you can see and just consists of two elements uh, one is this clicky thing here. And then we have the open hat and a layer as well to it. This kind of adds a little bit of extra um, rhythm to it as well. And then um, this obviously gives it that sustain. And then the other one, I've just imported the loop that kind of sounded like what he was doing. I think he likes to uh, change up the different loops that he uses um, for each different um, drop which is something you can experiment with um, so for this one I uh, settled on a loop that sounds like this oh. those are some of the effects which we'll get to in a bit um, now I want to talk about the baseline uh, now the baseline is uh, one of the most fundamental parts of uh, this track. Um, the baseline is really what gives it its drive, and I've talked about uh, uh, Captain Zook baseline before. Um, but what you really want is a baseline that kind of repeats every bar, and um, therefore you want to make sure that your melody works uh, well when it's repeating a lot, because it's going to be repeating a lot. If you can see all of these clips, um, imagine all the clips that we have here. Um, it's constantly repeating. So you need to make sure that your melody works. Um, I've settled on the melody that looks like this. I'll show it in MIDI form if you want to copy it. Um, here are the notes that are being used. And uh, this is what I made. I'll also show some of the automation. Um, you have the volume here, which is not being used. We have this macro here, which is the face. Um, I've talked about this baseline before, so if you want to, you should watch that tutorial. Um, the unison, again, isn't used. It's just at um, 7. 
but B isn't is turned off, so that's okay. We have the master volume, which just adds a little dip here so that the volume is kind of normalized. Sometimes with bass notes, one note has a higher volume than the other, either um, an actual volume or just perceived loudness. Um, so this is there to compensate for that. And then um, finally macro one will open up the actual patch and see what macro one is doing. And it's just adding a slight bit of movement to the filter cutoff. Um, so that gives it a little bit of, of a cool texture there. So the final baseline together with the kick sounds like this. So that's what we have and obviously it repeats very nicely and it's it's very danceable. Um, that's mainly due because of the, the offbeat feeling that it has. Um, using eighth notes you get that offbeat uh, feeling and that works really well with this kind of track. Alright, so now I want to talk about some of the lead sounds uh, that I used in this track. And the first one is one of the most important ones, it's um, kind of the main melody. Um, what he will do is he will have one kind of main melodic theme a little uh, stinger almost uh, that sits every so often in the track and kind of just plays the same melody and kind of reminds you that you're still listening to the same track basically because these tracks are like 12 minute long um, you want to remind the listener obviously that you're still listening to the same track like for example in a dj set maybe um, so to do that what i've done is created this melody here which works re really well with the delay that i set up for it um, so the delay timing together with the melody kind of creates a counter melody being played later. Um, so that sounds like this. So the first time it's going up here and then because of the way the delay timing is set up and uh, the length of these notes, um, once the delay starts to ring, it kind of feels like it's going down instead. So that's a really cool effect um, that I decided to add here kind of accidentally stumbled uh, across it, but it works really well. Um, generally speaking, talking about delay for a little bit, um, he has very long delay tails or very long timings on the delay. Normally pe people tend to use between like the two, which is eighth notes and the four, which is uh, fourth notes, maybe dotted eight notes, which is the three here. Um, but here I mostly use the eight here, which is um, one over two, I think. So every two beats, um, the delay repeats. Then some of the other elements, let's go through them. We have this one, which I talked about before, I think. It's the, the very clicky sound here. And the reason why that works is because this is played at such a low octave that you can hear individual clicks. So the individual clicks here of this saw wave doing that and then we give it its tone with the high resonance and then by automating the filter cutoff you can give it different tones to that click it kind of works like a lot of impulse files uh, played after each other um, so that's how that that kind of clicky vibe uh, happens and obviously with the effects um, it works really well the delay adds a lot to it because it kind of multiplies the amount of clicks that you hear and um, therefore obviously it, it sounds um, a lot more like a texture than just a few clicks uh, happening one after the other. So we have a few variations of that and then we also have a few variations of a different sound. Uh, also kind of a squelch based sound. We have that and then we have a different version as well. Um, so the way this works is we're basically generating a saw wave here at, um, let's see what key this is. So this is the key E1. And then what we're doing is we're boosting the fifth of that key. So that would be C. As you can see, we have a C boosted there. We have C boosted here or B apparently. And then B as well here. Okay, yeah, it should be B, I'm sorry. Uh, my music theory isn't that great. So we're boosting the B key, which kind of gives it this cool dual tonal vibe and um, this other one is doing the opposite so this is playing a B and then we're boosting in the EQ we're boosting peaks at E um, you can see E5 here E7 
I think this is at. And then we have E2. Um, so those, again, those are kind of what gives it the dual tonal vibe. And then that pitch difference here is due to the way uh, this delay is set up. So we'll switch timing. Um, let's see if we can open that up. As you can see, we're switching the timing um, of the delay halfway through. And that because it's set at re-pitch mode, it's going to pitch down um, the first part of that sound and then try to stretch it out so that it fits in the second timing of the delay. And that gives it that really cool down pitching effect that you hear as well. And that works really well. The next element here, what we have is kind of a polyrhythmic element. Um, this sits in one part of his track and I decided to add it to mine as well. Uh, it sounds like this. Again, it's kind of a squelch based um, sound. So it's a saw wave being played at a uh, one over four dotted note. So that's where the kind of polyrhythmic feeling comes in. And um, this just goes to the pitch. And then we have another one, um, very long LFO going to uh, the filter cutoff. And um, some of the other things we're doing is playing with the dry wet of this delay here. Um, it sounds like this. You can hear it very nicely um, towards the end of this loop here. Kind of gives it that stereo effect that almost acts like a little fill there. Um, again, just makes the sound a little bit more interesting. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is this sound here, which is also an, a very interesting sound. Uh, what we're doing here with this MIDI is just playing um, kind of this rhythm where we have basically this bar is repeating and we're playing either E1 or E0 notes. And then again, it's a saw wave sound, um, kind of based of a squelch. And we have this being uh, the volume and um, then we're modulating the filter cutoff, I think, or automating the filter cutoff, as you can see here. And just by moving the filter cutoff, you get different kind of textures. And those are repeating very fast. So that sounds like this. Oh, let me find a place where it's not low passed. I think here. You can see where the filter cutoff goes up, you get a cool texture. Um, with a lot more high end and then where it goes down, it's a lot more mid range. Um, so that's that sound. And then we have some final melodic sounds as well to kind of add interest to it. Some sounds that happen not very often, but just add something cool to it. That's one of the sounds. And then here we have another kind of more aggressive sound, I think. Again, all saw wave based. So all of his sound design um, is kind of saw wave based. So I d decided to uh, stick to saw waves when making this stuff. And um, yeah, those are all of the kind of lead sounds. There's a few bad sounds that almost act like a lead sound. Um, the first one being in the intro, mostly um, kind of starts off the song as well with a little pitch band. As you can see, we have the pitch band. Uh, going up here, which acts like a reverse tape stop effect. Um, and that kind of gives us a cool effect in the intro as well. Very nice, very slow morphing pad. Um, just playing the same note over and over again. And that's kind of the basis for where all the other elements sit on. Um, then we have a layer of on that, uh, which will come in slowly. As you can see, mostly saw wave based. Again, um, this is the basic mini version of the saw wave. Just a detuned, um, almost a super saw. And again, soaked in delay. Um, obviously, most of his elements are soaked in delay because delay really helps 
kind of extend the length of uh, a sound so you don't need a lot of sounds um, to fill up this 12 minute track as you can see the the, the quantity of sounds is not really that much and they're just used very often and um, most importantly um, because they have very long delay tails you kind of sweep they're kind of more sweeping than just happening and then stopping they have a, a very long uh, length to them because of that long delay um, so this pad sound that I have here is also being used elsewhere to actually play two different notes here. Um, so for example, this is it. So this sits in the drop and kind of adds a little bit of a harmonic content uh, to, to some parts of the drop which is uh, really nice because it helps it uh, this drop stand out a little bit uh, from the other ones. Um, sometimes you want more effects based, sometimes you want a little bit more um, harmonic or melodic based uh, and stuff like this really helps there. The final pad sound in this project sounds like this. Kind of an organ sound and um, what I did here is have some weird chords which kind of work well here. Uh, we also have an answer to this one. And both um, sound really cool because of the chords they're playing. I don't think the sound itself is very complex. Um, as you can see, it's just detuned sine waves. Nothing more than that. And um, delay, reverb and some EQing to kind of get the tone right. To make sure that it doesn't resonate too much in that mid-range. Finally, we have some of the effects here which I'll play. Um, we'll start off with um, the intro effects and listen to those. There's a little vinyl loop here which just adds some vinyl to it as well as some little buzzing nice background loop and then we have one cool effect here. So what I did with this effect is I made the original one here and then I rendered that out um, to audio down below and then I reversed it. So we have this reverse effect happening here. Again, very long delay to kind of make sure that it's very long and that you don't have to add so many elements to keep it interesting. Um, some of the other effects um, are this one here. And this is a render from something I made in, um, I think, Serum. And it uses um, very long pitch changes and then um, a lot of delay where also the delay timing is being changed. So that changes the actual speed of the, uh, the sweep down. I don't have the patch for this anymore. Um, unfortunately, I had to remove it to edit this a little bit better, or I had to freeze it to edit it a little bit better. Um, but I think that was the, the, the main way I made that sound. We have some other sounds here as well. Just kind of a texture sitting there adding some interesting stuff to the intro. We have another texture here, uh, kind of a squelch based one. And this one it is a really long one, so it's a little bit lower in volume, but it kind of goes throughout the whole intro. Uh, because the intro is so long, uh, in fact, it is uh, almost two minutes long. You need a few effects that are like very long and kind of help you drive through the entire intro. Um, some other effects are just kind of these sweeps and um, we have an impact here, for example, which you can see has a very low um, filter cutoff here on the, the low pass. Um, so that's just to add a little bit of rumble to um, when we go from the intro to the kind of pre-drop area where also the bass comes in and we have a few more different effects and stuff like that. 
Then we have some of the effects that I used to fill up one of the drops. Um, I'll just play all of them together and they sound like this. Those are some of the effects I used. Again, this is a very um, squelch based sound with the bandpass filter on top of a saw wave. And um, just modulating the filter cutoff. We have an FM sound. Again, I rendered this out so that I could chop it up and, and place it on different parts of the timeline. But I think this is just an FM sound. Um, by zooming into it, it definitely has an FM look to the waveform. Um, so very simple FM setup, I think. And uh, you can like pitch around individual clips. I might have done that or um, I might not have. Um, sometimes I'll make a very short sound and, and cut that up and make it bigger and change like the notes afterwards. Or sometimes I will play a few different notes, record those and then um, use very little snippets of those. And in this case, I've done um, the latter. And that just gives it again a bit of a tonal effect to it as well. We have some noise effects here, which um, are just bandpass on top of noise instead of a saw wave. And those are almost all the effects. Then the last thing I want to talk about, I talked about the little break here we have. Um, so this is the only break where kind of everything drops out. Um, in my case, I did still keep the drums in, but they're so low that they're almost not noticeable. Uh, at points and the baseline again is still here um, but it's layered up with this pad and um, to fill up the like the long gap what I did was um, add a very long vocal which I stretched up and used um, the texture mode to kind of warp around and stuff like that um, so the vocal sounds like this we will act immediately on the more troubling aspects of this report with respect to alcohol use and that together with some uh, delay sounds really cool. I think I might have, yeah, dry wet, automated the dry wet amount up so that it comes in a little bit drier. And then towards the end, you can really start to hear the delay sound going. And then finally, we changed up the timing a little bit so that it fits with the drop, which starts here. Um, so that's all I wanted to talk about for this. Um, this, I hope this is inspiring for you. I will now play um, the final product so you can listen to it. It is a bit long, um, but if you want, you can um, listen to the whole thing. Um, so with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to leave a like. And um, if you're new here, please subscribe. Bye-bye.